What happens to DNA when you die? How long does it last? A week? A year? 38,000 years? This is the best place in the world to study human decomposition as it happens. Welcome to the body farm. How many on the surface? 100 and then... There are 200 cadavers in these woods. Some are in shallow graves, others out in the open, covered only by black tarps. Much better if we had a huge influx mm -hmm. of uh, donations. All have been donated to the University of Tennessee in the name of research, so that forensic scientists can get a better understanding of exactly what happens to a human body okay. after death. So I want to go ahead and uncover this. This is one that has been out here since the middle of October. Okay. And what you're starting to see here is several different colors, and that relates to the breakdown of your blood cells. Uh, and you also see uh, insect activity. It's a great place to feed, a great place to live for them, and it's just ideal. One of the things that I was hoping to do was to get... Bruce McCord is an expert in forensic chemistry who's been working with the team at the body farm to study the effects of decomposition on DNA. I had thought that we could try some different kinds of chemicals. What we have here is a body that's been left out in the elements for a period of time. The body tissue is gone. You're left with these bones. And within the bones, there's still DNA. But what you'd find is that, well, the, the rain's been coming down. It's exposed to the air. Um, the cells are breaking apart. The bacteria is, is, is decomposing the body. Big, long strands of DNA break up into smaller and smaller pieces. And this process occurs over a period of weeks. After death, DNA quickly degrades into tiny fragments each 30 million times smaller than when alive. But then the degradation slows down, and it can survive in this fragmented form for thousands of years, as long as the conditions are right. If you want to recover ancient DNA, hopefully you'll find a site where there's limited ability for oxygen and moisture to get into the bone and further decompose it and great extremes of temperature won't be occurring. In 1980, Croatian archaeologists excavated Vinja Cave and found a mass of bones. Among them, an unremarkable fragment known as V80. But for some reason, this bone is packed with DNA. It contains more usable DNA than any other Neanderthal bone that's ever been tested. The quite extraordinary rich content of DNA in this bone tell us that there was some sort of special condition in this cave, what, what was critical for preservation of DNA in this bone. Perhaps the temperature was right, the humidity, the soil, but other bones in the Vinya cave have not yielded as much DNA. There was something special about V80. Its fragmented shape may be a clue. It is widely believed that Neanderthals in this part of Europe practiced cannibalism. Whether for food or for ritual, they were splitting bones and defleshing them. If V80 was cannibalized, it may help explain why its DNA was so well preserved. Stripped of any organic material, the bone would not have attracted the same interest from animals, insects, or microbes. And its DNA would not have deteriorated so quickly. There are hundreds and hundreds of Neanderthal bones. Many of them have been tested for Neanderthal DNA. Only this bone could unlock the secrets of Neanderthal genome.
But before V80 can be used in the Neanderthal Genome Project, researchers at the Max Planck Institute have to be sure its DNA is really Neanderthal. The biggest obstacle they face is contamination from modern humans. They do everything they can to work in sterile laboratories and keep their DNA out of the equation. It's almost impossible to distinguish from the DNA sequence if you're looking at the Neanderthal or if you're looking at the modern human. So we have to try to work under very clean conditions, for example, wearing this kind of protection clothes to, in this case, not protect us from the samples that we work with, but rather protecting the samples from, from us, from our own DNA. Despite the precautions, nearly all Neanderthal samples have already been badly contaminated from years of handling by archaeologists and museum curators. But by sheer good luck, V80 was originally classified as an animal bone. It was locked away and ignored for 20 years. It was barely touched by human hands. When the Neanderthal Genome Project started, researchers hoped they would find other bones that would have as much DNA as V80. But despite searching for two years and testing more than 70 bones, they found nothing that's close to matching V80. The conditions in the cave, the circumstances of the death, the inaccurate classification, all combine to make V80 unique. The success of this entire project now depends on this one bone.